That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about the worst hair in film for 2023. This is meant to be for fun. Uh, <laughs> people often uh, like when I comment on hair, so I thought why not keep track of the biggest disasters we've seen in film over the past year. Mm -hmm. Again, this is meant to be for fun. I believe almost all of the people listed in this video uh, were wearing wigs. So, you know, it's not like I'm commenting on these actors personally. I also am not trying to shade the hair and makeup people because I understand sometimes they don't have the appropriate resources. The reason I talk about hair a lot and makeup is because I am a licensed cosmetologist. But also, oftentimes bad hair and makeup will take us out of a film. Mm -hmm. It's distracting. Yeah. So, again, just for fun, I have 15 people on my list. <laughs> Drag them. Number 15, Sierra Renee from the movie Paint. Her hair, she's supposed to be like this quirky, this was that Bob Ross. Owen Wilson film. Oh, mm -hmm. Like Owen inspired Owen Wilson, Owen Wilson film. And her character is supposed to be like one of those flowery, you know, people who would paint on public access. But her hair always looked like it was a mess and needed to be taken down. And it drove me crazy. Because it also looked like this character would have textured hair, but her hair was always straight in the film. So she took the time to straighten it, but then always had it like a messy thing. Mm -hmm. Hated it. Number 14, Jenna Malone in Consecration. <laughs> this poor lady has on a wig that is wigging. And I think the combination of how crazy her wig looked with the serious nature of the film sure. and the way the film is shot took me out every time. Mm -hmm. Then, even the actor playing her as a kid, like in flashbacks, had a similar crazy-ass wig. It was laughable. Number 13, Andy Serkis and Luther the Fallen Son. His character's the villain. Yeah. And he has on this wig that is... I mean, it's typical, like, toupee, overdone. He just looks crazy. And it didn't help that the movie was bad. Well, yeah. Number 12, Glenn Close in Heart of Stone. Poor Glenn. Her, she has, like, this, like, bob. It, it's white hair that just looks very jarring with her angular features and her makeup. Because it's a Netflix film that has that... Sheen. Sheen to mm -hmm. it that makes her look like she's been softened. Who, whomever painted her eyebrows, they look so severe. The minute she came on screen, I was like, whoa. We were like, why they do Glenn like that? Why they do Glenn like I that? I mean, some they, stylists seem to have a hard time with her, especially on indie films like that Mila Kunis film she did, Four Good Days. With the, yes. And that's her buddy Rodrigo Garcia <laughs> that directed that. Also, the upcoming Lee Daniels movie, she has some interesting hair. Number 11, Elsa Pataki and Carmen. Elsa Pataki plays a bartender at uh, Rossi De Palma's like burlesque nightclub. And it's supposed to be like this dreamscape environment. But Elsa Pataki's hair is so overdone. And I, I think of all the entries, she is the one, who, maybe that's her actual hair. Um, and it's just like... It doesn't match her skin tone. It's this overly highlighted hair that's sort of like pin curled in like a like, like a 1950s way. It just doesn't match what I think they're doing at this bar. It's so overdone. I think she looks out of place. I hated it. Number 10, Augie Duke in Moon Garden. <laughs> We're some deep cuts here. These are some deep cuts. This lady's character, she... It's about a girl who, it, it's about parents who have a young daughter and the daughter hits her head and goes into a coma. And so we're kind of like in this daughter's mind as she's going through this experience. But the mother, who we're made to understand has like maybe some mental health issues, her haircut, she has this thin ass bob with these short ass bangs. And then the color of it is overdone. It's like these copper low lights. With, she just looked crazy. Very distracting to me. Number nine, Jay Baruchel and Blackberry. Yeah. Now, I really enjoyed the film Blackberry, and I enjoyed Jay Baruchel, but his character, he's portraying a man who had salt and pepper hair. At a very young age. At a very young age, and then transitions to being all, almost all white. So Jay Baruchel has to wear 
um, two different kinds of wigs throughout the film. And these installs are crazy as hell. There were many times when it looks like the sideburns are lifted and it was just super wiggy. Number eight is Glenn Howerton, also from Blackberry. Mm -hmm. His character chose to shave his head and then have hair glued onto the sides to mimic a balding man. And it just looks crazy. His makeup looks crazy. <laughs> I really, really liked him in this film as well. And I think the movie's excellent. But yeah, I think they should have gone with a wig cap. Because you yeah. can see shadowing where he buzzed his head. Number seven, Melora Hardin in Clock. She plays this like fertility doctor who's up to no good. But her character has this pompadour mullet. That was so distracting and ugly. And this woman is so beautiful. Oh, and then for what her character does, it's just like, why this hairstyle? Right, Melora. It doesn't make any sense. Number six, Shuya Sophia Kai in Meg 2 The Trench. That character was so annoying and she was made more annoying by this hairdo. She had these two little buns that you said reminded you of those like nest noodle, like, like, like when you make spaghetti the nest, nest. Like, like the spaghetti nest on the side of her head. It drove me crazy. It didn't make sense with her being like in these dire situations and somehow she kept these two little buns in. Hated it. Number five, Rosario Dawson in Haunted Mansion. Yeah. I can oh, with that. She had the most ugly round cut, like short cut and it, it was straight. But then at the end, when all's well that ends well and she's happy and found a man, then we see her natural texture. So first off, why this ugly ass hair, hairstyle in the beginning of the film? And also, you're being haunted. You are in full distress. Mm -hmm. But you have time to flat iron your hair every day? This is an example of when hairdos don't make any sense. Right. She should not have had that hairstyle being chased by ghosts and under stress. Yes, that should be a part of the consideration uh, of the production design, really. Yeah. Like, hair and... Ugh. Number four, Jane Fonda and 80 for Brady. Yeah. No, that... All of her wigs were synthetic. All those hairlines were real hard. And I just didn't quite understand because she's supposed to be like this bombshell of a lady. She's like the Rue McClanahan of this group. And she know? And we see her in her apartment, in her bedroom. She has like rows of wigs on mannequin heads. And it's like, maybe instead of having 30 shake-and-go wigs, you could have bought two nice human lace front wigs. I just don't understand why they had her looking so crazy because, of course, a woman of a particular age with, you know, the kind of makeup she has to wear to look, like I guess, to feel herself, I don't know. It just looks so bad. Unless they were thinking maybe she has to look like somebody that would have to depend on winning a ticket to the game. Perhaps. I mean, yeah. But still, it, it she looks terrible. It I does. thought Jane Fonda didn't need to look that bad. I agree. Number three, Shawnee Smith and Saw X. <laughs> I think what made it worse is this movie's supposed to be set between like one and two or two or three. It's supposed to be earlier on in the franchise. So this would have been like 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. But then when you compare what that character looked like in those early films to what she looks like in this one, and then she has that damn artichoke hair, she just looks crazy as hell. She does. It was distracting to me. Number two, Tom Blythe, Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Or as he, we like to call it now, The Hunger Birds. The, yeah, now I've been calling it The Hunger Birds. <laughs> he has that awful box blonde hair in the beginning. Then it transitions to him buzzing his head when he has to join the like military in the districts. So now he has this buzzed hair with like bleach blonde. But then... In earlier on in the buzz cut sequences, it looks like, I mean, you can see his roots growing out, but I guess it's supposed to look like he's unnatural blonde. Doesn't make sense. Then towards the end, now that he's back in favor with the, um, the capital people, now he has like platinum blonde hair. Uh -huh. It's just three variations of a color that does not make sense for this character. At one point when he grows his hair back a little, one character goes, oh, your curls are back. Like, what curls did he have? I just thought it looked so terrible. You didn't watch George Clooney's The Boys in the Boat, but Callum Turner had the similar I know problem. you mentioned that yeah. in that review. Also, um, and it doesn't make sense for a character that's starving. Under Tom Blythe, there's an honorable mention. Viola Davis's makeup in The Hunger Birds, where they have her looking like 
paper mache mm -hmm. like is a travesty. My number one choice for worst hair in film for 2023 is Sophie Wilde and Talk to Me. <laughs> this was controversial. I got a lot of nasty messages about me making fun of her hair and saying that clearly it's a relaxer that's growing out. I know that. I think my problem with her hairdo and why it doesn't work is she looks mentally ill. So I feel like it took away from the characterization that this woman looks like unstable. It just looks bad too. She, I, like I don't know why she needs to look that bad. Yeah. The, the, what, what was is it, does it s supposed to say something about the characterization? Because that's what you end up thinking. If anything, she should have started out with her hair laid, like. And then it starts like to... a cute Megan Good, Halle Berry, Tony Braxton short do. And then as things unravel, then she starts to look like a plucked bird. Mm -hmm. But to have her look crazy from the beginning as the, the audience, I felt like I couldn't really trust her. I can, I can trust that you're going to make any good choices <laughs> with that hair. Right. <laughs> All right. That's it. If any of the winners would like an award, just reach out to me. I can send you a plaque. Do you have anything you want to add? No. All right. Follow us on Patreon. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, my God.